Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Linksight Two Hundred One. Today, we are going to begin the new module. We are going to talk about phonology.、Uh, for Set Three Point One, we are going to talk about phonemes, minimal pair, and allophone. Okay, so let's have a little bit review first.、Uh, in in the next module, Set Two, we had we were talking about phonetics. So let's review a little bit phonetics. Study the physical manifestation of language. In other words, we are、uh, study the real sound.、Uh, we study articulators, sound properties, and sound waves.、Uh, now let's switch our focus to phonology. So what about phonology? Phonology studies. The mental sound system of language. So phonetics is about the physical property, and phonology is about the mental property. Okay, so here I'm drawing the distinction between the physical and mental systems. So the first thing I the first thing that I need to do is to convince you there's a distinction between mental and physical. Uh, systems, so so for example, not every consonant in a language can occur together, forming a consonant cluster. So in the physical world, of course, of course, we can put whatever sounds together, right? As long as your your mouth can produ can produce the、uh, consonant cluster. However, um. In the language itself, sometimes it's not the case because, for example, in in English, v and l, v and l can never occur together. However, f and l can can do so. So we have fly, f and l, but not fly. However, fly is a possible sound to produce, right? But fly is possible in other language. It is not a legal. Combination in English, but it is legal in other languages. So, in our mental world, if you are, if you are a native English speaker, you know, v v v is not a possible combination. This is a mental rule, not physical rule, because your sound, your 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 mouth can produce this sound. Okay, so、uh, the study of combination consonant clusters. Falls into the study of phonology, not phonetics. Okay, another example. Okay, mental units. So, um,、uh, let's take a look at this video. We have many sound in different pitches. Okay. The point of showing this video is that、um, physically we hear different mass now, right? But however, in our mental interpretation, we know all of them means the same thing. In other words, even though our our ears hear different sounds, but our mind, our brain tell tell us that is the same sound because it has the same meaning. So this is this is another distinction between the、uh, physical and the mental sides. So put these concepts in.
terminologies. It will be, we have made in different pitches. Uh, this notation here means di different pitches. Okay, uh, so we have different forms. Form is the physical sounds, and I use square brackets to show uh, it's a form. However, all the forms, all the different forms, are mapped onto the same phonological rep rep representation. The same phoneme. Phoneme is a new word. Okay, so all of the different sounds, all of the different physical sounds are mapped into a single mental representation. And mental re representation, mental sound representation is called a phoneme. Okay, and we use uh, slashes to represent phonemes. Okay, now let's consider another case. If I switch S sound into E sound, and I we have me, uh, me here and me here, and now me is mapped to a phonemic represent, representation, which is me, and me is me, right? So it has different meanings. It mapped to these two sounds are mapped onto different phonemes. It changed the meanings. Okay. Um, let's talk about a little bit some abstract idea a little bit here. So actually, the mental re representation here, like me sound here, this is a little bit mystery. We cannot directly hear or pronounce the thing in the uh, slashes. Because this uh, mental rep rep representation is something exists in your mind. However, we can hear this sound by hearing these phones. And we can pronounce this mental rep representation by pronouncing these phones. So what I try to say is that this mental representation is not the thing that you can directly pronounce it or you can directly hear it. How we really hear and how we really, really produce is this phonetic representation. Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about phoneme. So phoneme is the uh, basic unit of languages phonology. And we put the phone phonemic phonemic repre representation in double slashes. I'm talking about phon phonemic. Uh, let me spell it with so we can say this is a uh, phonemic phonemic representation. Okay, phonemic repre representation. And the phonemes can combine with each other to form larger words. For example, pet has three phonemes. And the uh, formal definition of phoneme is the smallest contrastive unit, which will bring about a change of meaning. So it's the smallest and contrastive meaning. And Contrastive. Contrastive means that if we change one of the phoneme, you'll become uh, the meaning of the word will be different. For example, um, a and e, right? And phoneme is the uh, mental representation of a sound. So it's totally mental. It's abstract. It's not. It does not exist in the real world. Okay. So contrastive phones means different phonemes. So let me give you some example. Now we can try out, now, now we are trying to tell uh, what are the same and different phonemes. So we have night and we have kite and night. The only difference is the first segment, the first sound. We have k sound with n sound. And then uh, the meaning of this Two sound combinations are different. 
are different. So it means that k and n are different phonemes. They are different sounds. They are different phones, and and then and then they are different phonemes at the same time. So um, the only difference is the first phoneme. Uh, notice that I'm not counting orthography, so we don't really care about written system. Orth orthography is not languages because some languages do not have written system at all. I'm talking about the two sounds. So if I change k sound into n sound, then we change the meaning. So it means that k and n are different phonemes. Okay, now you know what the phoneme is. Now let's move to the second concept, minimal pairs. So pairs of words in a language that differ in only one segment and have distinct meanings are minimal pairs. So um, minimal pair is a device that, that we can use to tell where the two sounds are the same or different phonemes. If they are in minimal pairs, then the two sounds are different phonemes. Okay, uh, here's an example of a, a minimal pair. So minimal pair must be two words, a pair, right? A pair of words. Now we have kite and night. They have only one difference here, the first consonant, k and n. So they, these two words, this pair of words, differ in only one position, in only one sound, in only one segment, so they are minimal pair. And they have different meanings, so they are minimal pairs. Okay, so uh, two conditions. The first one is the single difference. The second one is they have to have distinct meanings. So the kite and night, different meanings, right? So uh, these two words are minimal pairs. Okay, another example is Pen, pen, and pan. Okay, they are minimal pairs as well because the vowel are different and the meaning are different. Okay. Can you think other minimal pairs in English? Let me give an, a little bit more. We can we can have pen and pen and and pen and bean. I'm not so good at this and uh, the word final consonant we have hat and hat okay right so all of the pairs are different different from each other in only one position in only one segment and segment and the meaning is different so um, they are mean more pairs okay and there are other features they can be contrastive as well so uh, for example in tone languages tones are contrastive so for i'm a mandarin speaker here so uh let's let me pronounce these four sounds for you have ma 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 it has the, it, the these four sounds have the same consonant and has the same vowel however they have different tones and they are, their meanings are different. Ma, 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 ma. Mother, numb, horse, and scold. So, in other words, for tone language, tone can be contrastive. So, the four Chinese words has the same segments, same phonemes, this combination, but the tone makes the meaning distinctive. So uh, the four words are minimal pairs as well. Just pick two to form a pair. And you can uh, watch this video to hear an introduction about the tonal difference in Mandarin. Okay, so if you are an English speaker, I think it's very hard to tell the difference. So um, in English, tone is not a contrastive feature. So what is contrastive is language specific. So um, anything can be contrastive if the subject of it would make a change in the meaning of the word. Yeah, so it's phonetic 
contrastive. Okay, so in another language, for example, vowel lens can be phonet can be phonemic as well. So in Australian English, these two words are different. Are different has different meanings, and the only difference is the vowel lens. We use the double dots to represent lens and vowel. So very and very, and it means different. Words, okay, and consonant lens can be phonemic as well. So in Japanese, double K means mint, and a single K means grave. And we use double consonant in the case lens and the consonant. We just introduce phoneme and minimal pair. Now it's a third concept to be conveyed. In this lecture, which is allophones, so let's review a little bit what phones are. Phones are the actual sound they can that you can produce and and that you can and that you can hear. On the other hand, phoneme is the mental representation, and the phoneme can be realized in different ways. A single phoneme can be realized as different phones. Right, and all the phones are the all of all of realized the phones of the same phoneme are called the allophones of left of left phoneme. Okay. Um. Let's has a real example. So we have we can a T sound. A T phoneme can be represented in. Can be realized as an unaspirated T, like this one, like as in stop. stop, right? Stop. The T sound in stop is unaspir unaspirated. Okay. On the other hand, the T sound in top, top. We have an unaspirate, unaspirated T and an aspirated T. However, they are mapped to onto the same phoneme. In other words, T an aspirated version and the aspirated version are the allophones of the same phoneme. This one, again, we use slashes to indicate phonemes and square brackets to indicate phones. So these two sounds, these two phones, are mapped onto the same phoneme. So t, 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 and t are the allophones of the same phoneme. Okay, that's it for today. So let's have a summary here. Phoneme is the mental representation of sound. A minimal pair are pairs of words. In a language that differ in only one segment and have distinct meanings, and other phones, different forms of the same phoneme. Okay, that's it for today, and remember to do the in class exercise.